Hi everyone. Um, today I got a hold of the lists for Bob Battle of Britain, which is a grand tournament uh, being hosted by the Juggernauts. Um, and I started doing meta work on them. So uh, this is the meta of Battle for Britain. Um, I, of course, as I usually do, I, I made a PowerPoint for it. And is it. Later on, I've uh, I've already made an agreement to, to go over uh, the lists themselves with Russell Wright of the Welsh WTC team, since he's not attending, so he can be fair and unbiased. Um, I am not attending either, but I am never fair nor unbiased. So this is the meta of Battle of Britain. The event itself is twelve fifty points. It's a you can bring a, a single or a dual a generic reinforced platoon. You can bring a single theater platoon or a single tank platoon. And at 1250 points, you can do some really nasty stuff with tank platoons. So if I was going, I would be bringing a tank platoon and I would be maxing out on all the nastiness that you can do. Um, some of the theaters, I also think, are really interesting in this setting. Or I think you should be running dual platoons. I don't think a single generic platoon is a good idea, um, but we will see. It's got uh, right now 25 players, uh, and I know that if uh, they end up with a lot of players, one of the TOs will uh, do some stand-in each round and play a game. There'll be five games over a weekend, and there is some comp being made. There is a little bit of, of changes to the rules. For instance, uh, machine guns, infantry born machine guns, um, medium machine guns in teams have got a little bit of a buff. Um, I think they took this from the Jugger Pack, where if you target a unit and you can damage that unit, they automatically gain a pin. So you you sort of count as if you hit with your medium machine guns. This, for me, encourages buying multiple medium machine guns, inexperienced, the cheapest ones you can get because they're pin machines. They can automatically deliver pins to anything you point them at, um, which is really cool. So let's see what people are doing. Now, first up, order dice. The order dice are between 12 and 20 with an average of 16.8, which is pretty much where I would have expected to be for 1250 points. Um, the, the, the guys being bringing 12, and there are three lists. Um, they are uh, two Death Star builds, and one of them is a tank platoon, which is a little bit of an odd tank platoon, with, which has it's a British tank platoon. It has lots of different tanks. Um, isn't it? I can't remember. But it, I do remember that it had like one of each tanks. Um, so when you're building Death Star, built you typically end up in low order dice count because if you're buying a tiger or a panzer four or whatever it, it does become very expensive um so i'm guessing some of these guys who bring 12 order dice lists are maybe not the most competitive players maybe they're new players maybe they're just players who like the theme of the list that they're building or who want to bring that one specific tank i hope some of them do well over the weekend. I hope you win some games, but I'm not expecting you to be massively successful. Um, then we have the 14 to 15 order dice uh, count. This is a little bit better, although still a little bit low for uh, for 1250. There were two lists uh, in, in this layer. Then we have the the, the, the main group. Um, comes in 16 to 17 and 18 to 19. There was a lot of lists in this range. Um, so so this is where most people sort of, the, the meta sort of st states, I think that the most lists were 18 order dice lists. I think there were eight of those. Um, and then we have one horde list, horde-ish. I mean, it's not very hordy. Uh, not for 1250 points, um, and it's a Chinese assault list with gorillas uh, in it, um, and it's only 20 order dice. I think the reason we're not seeing more horde lists is that you can only bring one or two generic reinforced platoons. If you want to go complete spam, you could build something with 30 order dice in it, uh, 
at 1250 points. But that would mean that your units are very vulnerable um, when everybody else is bringing something where they have a lot of punch because they've got a lot of points. So, so this is pretty much what I would expect, I guess, from, from this sort of a setup with the pack. Um, the nations. Now, there's a, a huge overweight of Soviet nations. They've got nine Soviets, six British. So these two are clearly the most popular nations and also the nations that I'm sort of expecting will do well competitively. Two Germans, uh, two Americans, they might also do well. And then one each of Bulgaria, China, Japan, Canada, Romania, and Finland. Um, all of these can do well. Um, maybe, uh, maybe some more than others. All of them could end up in the top five. The only, the only builds that I don't think will are actually army builds more than they're actually nations. Um, Death Stars, I don't think, will end up in the top five, top ten. The army builds, 10 lists, and, and this is actually very encouraging because we have a huge array of different army builds here, including some very rarely seen and, and some army builds that I haven't really talked about uh, here on this channel at all. Um, so we had 10 lists that had mixed bag elements. I'm seeing more of this. Um, I think there's a, a slight meta shift going on where people are going back, I guess, a little bit back. Um, for. For a while, we had lists that did one thing really well, um, like the barbecue list, for instance, or the, the Gurkha assault list. Um, more people are now moving back towards, as I see it, um, back towards mixed bag lists that has a lot of a little bit of everything. Um, whether this is true or not, we'll see. Um, Seal and Open was won by a, a dual mixed bag where everything there was two of everything in it. Um, so maybe there is this meta shift going on that people move back towards that and are making it work and are winning tournaments with it. We'll see. Um, there are four Death, Death Star builds um, and seven Soto Tank or Tank Platoons, real Tank Platoons. Um, so quite a lot of lists had Tank Platoon elements. I had expected that. As I said at the start, if I was going, I would bring a Tank Platoon. Um, only three lists had horde elements with like huge amounts of bodies they could put on the table. Um, one of them, of course, was the Chinese one. Um, and there was a Japanese one as well, um, which had, had these elements, I think. Um, the Romanian one, I can't remember now. Um, we'll get back to that once I do the, the actual list reviews with Russell. Um, two of the lists had uh, heavy focus on cavalry and on escape moves, recce moves, um, and I think both of them were Soviets. Maybe there were no Polish lists, so so it was not. And I do remember one of them was Pol uh, was Soviets, um, which had both uh, cavalry and motorcycles. Um, there were two lists which had barbecue as their main focus, uh, which is three plus flamethrowers basically. Um, one of them being Phil, who brought a very similar list to Seal and Open. Um, and there are seven assault lists. So you can already see we have a very wide spread here. The assault lists, of course, mostly were Gurkhas, uh, but there were some Soviet lists, which had a lot of SMG armed units, um, which can also assault. Right? Then we had something very unusual. We had a forward artillery observer list. There's one list in there that has three forward artillery observers. Yes, it is a British one that has the free one and buys two extras. Um, so that's insane. If all of those land, that player is going to be laughing because he is winning automatically. If they don't land, he spent 200 points on something they can't use. Um, and there was one board control list. This is a very unusual build. We don't see it very often, but it sometimes pops up, especially when you have theatre platoons. And this was the LDF Luftwaffe Defense Force. Um, I have mentioned it before on this channel. Um, it's a list where in, in um, attacker defender scenarios, you can always choose to be the defender and you can deploy the hot wire. Um, so you can control where the enemy goes. And for a list that has a lot of uh, artillery options uh, that can be really beneficial. 
Um, so a very interesting list, very interesting to see how well it does. It does struggle a lot when assaulting or pushing up. Um, so that will be a problem for a player. For me, the list rankings was between 1 and 5. Um, there was one, one list, which was something I actively consider a bad list. There were a couple of 1.5, no, 1.5, 1 1 a bad list which had, which had some elements which could, could work. And there were a couple of twos, which are thematic lists, non-competitive lists. The rest were all threes, fours, 3.5s, and a single five. Um, with the most being, the, the most common one being three. So the average was a three. Um, so average competitive lists, which I guess is what I would expect to see. Um, the, uh, the clever viewer will notice here that there's not like an even distribution between bad lists and good lists. It's not like I'm, I'm setting out to make sure that there's an equal amount of each list. I, I, uh, when I do this, I evaluate the lists based on my list ranking. Go and watch the video of that, which says that one is a bad list. It's a list that makes actively choices that are bad or, or not good for winning the game. Um, a two is a list that's thematic and sacrifices uh, game-winning capability for theme. A three is the average standard um, competitive list, list you know, you'll typically see in tournaments. Um, a four is a strong competitive list that can typically win or end up top ten, top five. Um, and a five is one of the strongest lists, a list that I could not improve even if I, if I wanted to. Um, so that's my list ranking. I don't see many fives, even at the WTC, which was the most competitive tournament that I've been to this year. There weren't many fives, um, although there was a lot of fours and 3.5s. Um, so, and, and that may be a reflection of my ability to rank lists. This is all based on, on one guy on the internet, after all. So, my predictions for the top five, as it stands right now, will be that these five people will end up top five. They might actually beat each other out in top five. Um, and they might be bad players, I don't know, but their lists are really good. We have Richard C., with his 17 organized Brits, Assault and Armor. Um, and we have uh, Brits, British assault armies are, are a thing. We have Steve, Steve D with his 18 order guys Soviets, which is a horde list. It has tanks. It's the tractor factory uh, theater platoon, which is really good. You get uh, inexperienced T-34s, some of it for free, and the rest with a hefty discount. So he has three of those. Um, then you have Simon R with his 18 order guys Soviets, which has assault elements and a lot of mixed bag. Really strong list in my opinion as well. Alistair Unicorn with his 18 organized Russians, um, and this has multiple different elements. It has assault elements, it has double uh, M30 multi rocket launchers, and it has armor as well. Lots of different elements, lots of different capabilities, very strong list. And finally, I have Martin K uh, with his 18 organized Brits. Again, assault and armor. This is a tank platoon with Gurkhas in it. So these are my top five. Next video will be me going over the list with Russell, hopefully sometime this week. Cheers, everyone.